What's up? What's up, everybody? So, um, this week was the World Intellectual Property Day. That was April 26th. And um, while we're celebrating IP, I wanted to talk about the status of IP in Africa because it, I usually not negative, but it's gloomy to say the least. I went through that process six years ago with ARED. Uh, but before I get started, I want to give you guys a little bit of data uh, and information. There's different organization, a uh, group organization. There's the Haripo, the African Regional Intellectual Property Organization. That's mostly um, English speaking country. Rwanda is one of them, actually. Uh, there's, uh, I think, 18 countries. It, it was passed in the 80s. Uh, uh, to the Harare Protocol, and you can Google, go to their website, check their, check their, uh, check them out. There's um, Africa Intellectual Property Organization. That's also French-speaking countries. I don't know why it was separated, uh, maybe by design or by accident. Let me not uh, speculate. But two different organizations. There's the World Intellectual Property Organization (WIPO). Uh, they have close to 200 countries. And then you have all the small individual. I mean, small. Uh, China have their own. India have their own. The United States have their own. Um, but for Africa, those are the two main organizations that I just listed. And um, but the, the the process to to apply is not as easy as you think it is. And I'll share some data uh, during the process. But. Um, the process is really tedious, and there's a reason why less than 1% of IP around the world are African. And what I mean by African is somewhat African dropping or, or, or applying for an IP uh, in their home country or across Africa. And uh, that's crazy. And when you look at the biological subject, which is pharmaceuticals and all, it's less than 0.1%, which is even worse. And that's related um, to the, you know, if you, if you look at all the, all the vaccine we use and all, we don't own none of that stuff. None of that stuff is owned by us. So obviously we have the mercy of, you know, anybody wants to say, hey, we're not giving vaccine uh, to those countries anymore, you know, so we don't develop anything. Uh, of course, in Africa, the number one country when it comes to IP is South Africa. Uh, Nigeria is not part of any of those groups. So you see all the dis different fragmentation when it comes to IP. So when you're trying to apply with an IP, and I'll give you a little bit of background. If you guys are trying to apply for an IP um, in Africa, right, uh, and, and um, in different countries, first of all, Yes, there is what they call if you start up or you don't have a lot of revenue or you don't have a lot of money, there's a lot of discount, you know, uh, project that exists. Uh, you can apply for a discount uh, for the application, but you still need a lawyer. And a lawyer, we all know, don't give no discounts. Uh, now, there's organizations that do do pro bono work. We've used them before. I'm not going to lie, but that's specifically for social impact enterprise but in general you need a lawyer and you're looking at two three thousand uh, dollar just to do the application because the application is very technical you need a, a lawyer that specializes in the IP process and then even when you apply to the IREPO or I, uh, AIPO or the, the French speaking ones you still have to well not you physically but the, the, the lawyers still have to go and drop those uh, dossier, as they call it, the, the, the cases of the, the IP in every country you want to apply to, right? Uh, and that's also a lot of time. And then, so the, 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 the economical challenge is huge because who has $4,000 uh, to spend on, on a lawyer on just, um, you know, fees and, and plus different small fees on different countries you want to apply? The second thing is, you have to understand, entrepreneurs, for some reason, we don't have this IP aspect of it in our culture. Or, you know, if you, if you look at most IP that exists in Africa, actually, close to half is IP done from foreign companies 
applying for IPs in Africa. So we, we don't necessarily have this culture of, hey, I came up with an idea, let me go and get an intellectual property. You know, so that's not part of us. We go, we do a business because we don't, we don't, most of us don't look past a few years. You know, most of the business, uh, you know, IP is really business that's going to grow in the next, you want to protect your stuff for the next 5, 10, 20 years, right? But we don't have that culture. Um, and it's, it's, uh, it's sad. The, 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 the third aspect, I would say, and the third and last aspect I would say is that R&D is not really supported by, um, um, by a government, by an organization, most grants. And I've said it many, many times in different vlogs that I've done, but most of our IPs, most of our research development funds come from abroad. And they're not in, they, they have no incentive to support African innovation. That's not their, their, their business case. That's not their focus. You know, those are taxpayer money from Europe, America. Um, but the incentive is to push their own agenda. So, but if you look at the budget of research and development in Africa, it's close to zero. And if they do exist, they're always, you know, subsidized by foreign companies that also dictate what we can or cannot do with our money. So it's, it's a vicious cycle that exists. And if you look at the numbers, uh, the data, um, it, it, it's, in, in, in all the, there's millions and millions of uh, uh, IPs across the world. Every year, there's close to a million being applied. But in the whole continent of Africa, we have between two to 4,000 uh, patents that has been applied and accepted in Africa that are owned by African. Uh, but without R&D, you know, budget, it's very difficult to take this prototype to a commercial product, to a commercial product, to production. Without manufacturing, it's also very difficult. Even today, even though today you don't necessarily have to manufacture on the continent, um, with this globalization, the supply chain can be done anywhere. But at the same time, how do you find money to, you know, pay for research? Um, especially in the pharmaceutical aspect. And, and, and this coronavirus is very interesting because uh, it, it pours also, we, we, there's, a vir there's a vaccine um, that has been, de has been developed by some, some people, I'm sure, across the world. How many of them are from Africa? Uh, I can tell you already, zero. Because even the research and development of the pharmaceutical that exists in Africa are not owned by Africans. You know, so what does that say about us? You know, we can't complain not having, not owning our own technology when we don't put funds behind it. And another thing is, you know, why are we not putting money? And I'm, I'm going off topic a little bit, but you know, there's the vaccine, but there's also natural ingredient that's been developed by Madagascar, you know, which is very, very interesting. I applaud them for, for, for really doing something about it and using, um, nature instead of chemicals and all, but going not going off topic, but let's go a little bit backwards. You know, we can't complain for not owning anything and then complain that we dependent for outside, uh, you know, IPs or technology to solve our problem. So this is my take on this word intellectual uh, property day. And um, I don't want to be negative, but something has to change. We need to create a uniform system. Uh, we need to simplify this system. Um, and by the time, most happy, I forgot to say that, but by the time you get your IP, it takes a few years. By the time that IP come, your technology has changed. So that also mindset uh, of, of timeline needs to change dramatically. Um, in this digital world, we should digitize the whole process and we should globalize in a sense where the whole continent should have one IP office, period. All right, guys, take care. Peace.